In the previous video, we saw how we can enter the different types of orders in the Retail Business Manager Excel template. In this video, we're going to see how we can generate invoices and purchase orders and how we can customize them and export or print them very, very easily. So now let's get started. So now we have already gone through in the previous videos how we entered all this data in the, the relevant input sheets, settings, the list of products, the prices of the products, partners involved in the business, the order header information, and the details of the orders that we have. And now what we're going to see now is the invoice sheet first. And the invoice sheet, if you enter, let's say for example, an order number that is not present in, in your order table, then you will see a warning like this saying, it's not a sale or a quote order, so do you really want it? And you should enter a valid order number. You can see that the invoice is getting populated automatically with all the relevant information. And if you want any of this information to be changed, for example, any of these fields to be different, then you can change it and then it'll automatically update here. And let's say, for example, for this one, I would want the ID of the partner, or if I don't want anything, then I check the delete so the ID does not appear. That's how you can customize the fields very, very easily. The All the, um, the partner information will be here and here, and the order information will be here. And then as we scroll down, we will see the specific line items in our order. And you, we've already customized it a little bit in the previous video where we put the quantity first and then the description and the unit price and all this. And you can change the format of any of this. For example, if I want to change the format of this specific cell and you can click there and then change it to something else. You can similarly change it. This is in a date format. If you don't want the date format like this, you can go to more number formats and choose uh, any of the other formats and then the specific cell will be updated. The This sheet itself is protected. You can't edit the these values. For example, you will see there are formulas here. So if you try to edit it, you will get a message like this. And so don't worry about messing up the sheet because it's built in such a way that you can choose which field you want to display without impacting any of the calculations negatively. So the template is very customizable that way. We saw in the previous videos how we can change the logo as well. So the, the customizable invoice is very, very effective. Uh, because regardless of the type of business you have, you can make the invoice suit your business. Now, the other important piece of this um, template is the inventory availability check. So this is a sale order, and we can see that both products, we have enough inventory as of 6th May to fulfill the order. This is great. So the template says that the inventory we have available uh, at the end of the day is this, the day before we had this many, on the specific 6th May, we will have so many sales, we will have so many purchases. So this is all coming adjustments, and this is all coming from the data that we entered in the order detail sheet. Now, let's imagine that, let's go back to the order headers, the purchase order which was supposed to receive on 5th May, we are using that to sell on 6th May. But let's assume that the purchase order they say it won't come on time, it will be 6th that it will come. So when you enter 6th May here, now let's go back to the invoice. Now you'll see that the inventory availability has changed. And this is because now you can see the message here, two products need transactions on the expected day in order to fulfill. These two products will need the purchases coming on 6th May in order to fulfill. So it means that it's just a warning. You, you, you will be able to fulfill the sell, sale order, but you are dependent on purchases happening on that day. So if you don't receive the purchase order P1, then you will not be able to fulfill this order. Let's think about another scenario where the purchase order, instead of coming on 6th May, let's say it comes on 7th May. So that means, only 7th May, you will receive all the inventory to fulfill. So now you will see the message stating that the order cannot be fulfilled. The order cannot be fulfilled because you don't have enough inventory on the 6th May. So these are the three different possibilities. You can have a available, available 
or there can be a warning symbol or there could be a not available to fulfill. So th these are the three statuses. So it's very important that you look at this before you commit to a sale order. Uh, that's the purpose of having all these inventory calculations in place to make the right decision um, if, for example, the order cannot be fulfilled. So what are the options you have? You have two options. One is you can negotiate with the customer and then uh, change the expected date of the sale order. Let's say uh, you commit to the customer. Now I can only give it to you on 8th. Uh, if the customer accepts, then that would be okay because you will have enough inventory on the 8th to ship to the customer. The other possibility is that you somehow um, get the, the supplier to supply early or you put a new order to another supplier, for example, to get the products earlier than 6th May so that you can fulfill the sale order. So this is how you can manage the uh, in such a scenario. So now we saw how the invoice is automatically calculated. Even, even the fields here can be customized and you can choose one of these available fields. The, the invoice sheet by default shows the 25 line items in page one. And then as you scroll down, you'll see this page two. And if your invoice has more than 25 line items, then this will be populated. So when that populates, um, one thing we have to make sure is that we have to, when we print, we have to include the second page. So now let's see how we can print our invoices. So we go to the file, print or control P, and then you will see the invoice. You will see that only one page appears because by default it is set to print one page uh, because most of the orders for a small or medium sized businesses could be less than 25 line items. It is set up that way. But if in your business, in some orders, if you have more than that, you could definitely change that. We'll see how shortly, but if you're printing it, you just print it like this. And if you're exporting to PDF, hit export, click PDF, and then you could choose a specific a folder where you want to save the specific PDF and then you can rename the PDF and you could, for example, uh, call it invoice number one or something where you put the invoice number on the uh, page name so that you can remember easily identify that in the future. So this is how you can publish to PDF and it'll get saved and then you can email it to your customer if needed. And I would also recommend saving this on a regular basis um, in your local computer because you will always have access to the invoice as it was when you sent it to the customer. Uh, keep in mind this template is, is always updating based on the information that you have here. Um, but it's good to have a backup where the exact version of the invoice as you send to the customer on that day is always good to have for reference. So definitely export it to PDF and save it in your local computer. Use your invoice number on the file name of the PDF for easier reference. Okay, so now we saw how we can print one page by default. If you want to print for two pages, then what you would have to do is to select the second page and then go to page layout, print area, add to print area. So now let's go back to file print. You will see that you see two pages now available for printing. This is the first and this is the second. And again, when you print, the borders will appear fine um, and um, you can export it to PDF again. Similarly, then both pages will now get exported into your PDF. So now that's how we can print two pages. And let's go to the purchase order. Everything works exactly the same, except two things. One is the fields displayed here are slightly different from a purchase order to an invoice. Um, and the second difference is that the there is no inventory check like we have in the invoice. Those are the only two differences. You can customize the fields the same way. You can, if you don't want a specific field, just hit delete and it'll disappear. You can change the formats, just click on the cell, go and change the format as you need, change the logo the same way. Uh, and all of this works by just typing in an order number. You may get a warning if there is no such order. If you have an order, you put the order number, it'll get updated instantly. So this is how it works, the same number of uh, pages. So if you have more than 25 line items in an order, you want to add the second page to when you're printing. Otherwise, by default, only one page will be printed. 
uh, and it'll be for 25 line items. So now that was a quick wrap up of how you can print or export invoices and purchase orders very, very easily in this Retail Business Manager Excel template. If you have any questions about any of the things that we talked about in this video, please leave them in the comments and I'll be very happy to respond. Thank you very much for watching this video.